Hey there folks, hello and welcome to my channel where I typically show you on how easy it is to build an affordable DIY smart home that supports the Apple HomeKit ecosystem all by using Homebridge and thanks to this awesome open source system called Homebridge, our new home is currently powered by it. The same system has allowed me to mix and match device types from different brands and made it possible for my family to interact with our new home all by using one app. All in all, providing us a true Apple Home experience on a budget and also works locally. And without a doubt, I'm also a thousand percent sure and certain that you all have benefited as well from Homebridge. And here we are in 2024 with so much of noise of matter standard the big alliance and the marketing that's behind all that hype. Unfortunately, it's always going to be available for certain regions. And don't worry, I ranted all in this video where I show you my top five reasons that matter will not kill Homebridge. But hey, no matter what, Homebridge has come a long way, hasn't it? Cause they haven't stopped development or stop updating the overall system. And at the same time, even the most used plugins have been updated at regular intervals. That's why in this video, as of version 1.8.0, these are the three features you must use or try. So before we go into knowing what those three features are, you must make sure your system is updated to the latest version. All right, the first feature is the detailed power options you have with version 1.8.0. Now this is very useful for all of us who run Homebridge on a Raspberry Pi, be it a three, four or five or any other Raspberry Pi you are using. This allows you to restart the operating system as well as shut down the server gracefully. Now, why is this feature so important? This is because it doesn't damage the micro SD card in the long run. Typically, we are so used to removing out the power cable. When this happens, you indirectly or directly damage a micro SD card because at some point of time, the Homebridge service is writing some information on that uh, SD card and it can damage in the long run. So with this feature, you can now restart the Homebridge service, restart the uh, OS as well as the shut it down. Now this option and this feature is not available on a Mac, Windows and Synology NAS because the Homebridge service is being hosted on that hardware and typically Homebridge doesn't have control on it. So if you're using a Raspberry Pi user and I am sure a majority are running around a Raspberry Pi, this feature is very important because of gracefully shutting it down, disconnecting the power cable and relocating the hardware even sometimes in restarting the entire server. You don't need to remove the power cable and reinsert it. So remember, make sure you update it and use these feature to restart the operating system and shut it down. Now, the next feature is for everybody. This one is most important as and when you go and update plugins, upgrade plugins, and sometimes things don't work. So with this new feature, if you go under plugin section and you can select any plugin and you can see that you've got two options over here. You've got plugin logs and report and issue. Now, when you click on report and issue, it automatically takes you to the GitHub page on where the plugin is. This way, if you had a, if you have an issue, you can simply look for it over here. It could be anything. It could be even login. So you could go into the filters, type in what exactly you're seeing and hit enter. You will see that there were 69 cases that were closed because of login issues. So this way you can go and see how you can resolve your issues instead of getting frustrated or not knowing where to look. And when you go and see that your issue is not available, you can go ahead and create a new issue. Now, when you create a new issue to be a lot more helpful for the developer to assist you or the community, then the same feature within the plugin is called plugin logs. So you can go and download the logs instead of copying and pasting some random thing, thinking it could be used, can download that plugin specific logs, and then you can go and add it to your issue. 
whether it's a feature, whether it's a bug report. So you can do that within Homebridge now instead of searching a Google. So second feature, very important, is using the plugin logs and reporting an issue. This way, you will have your answers to all of the issues you're having with your Homebridge setup. Now, number three feature is very uh, cool, which I feel like Homebridge should have bought in the first place, is connecting with the community. So now if you click on the three dots and if you click on support, you can be taken directly to where all the community is exchanging their ideas, their issues, their positive points and any other thing that they identify or get help with Homebridge. So the first one, which I always recommend it, is join the Discord server. Within the Discord server, you can connect directly with the plugin developer and all of the community members that are talking about the plugin or any of the issues. So this is a very easy way of knowing how to get better at Homebridge and even on the plugin side. So you have to join Discord where you can join in any of the plugin channels, whether it's verified or non-verified, and they're all organized in an alphabetical manner. And along with it, with support, you can also go and connect to the official community is Reddit. So this way now Homebridge has bought in all of the communities within its platform, making it a lot more easier to get answers to your questions, share your experience, as well as resolve other users issues. So you can also join this. For me, I've joined the Discord, I've joined the Reddit community. It makes a lot more easy for me to track down on what I intend to do or what I have or what I am having issues with. And there you have it, folks. The game-changing features that make Homebridge a still must-have for any smart home enthusiast in 2024. Which are you most excited to try out? Please let me know in the comment section. and. Always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more DIY smart home videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers and have an awesome day.